waiting. Uh, turns out the third company is not showing up, so um, they're not able to make it. So it's going to be a short pitching event, but we have um, this is meant to be very uh, relaxed and casual. Um, we do have um, some some people that are going to be doing the um, the judging. I'm going to go through the presentations quickly. Uh, I'll make mention of the company to the best of my ability that ironically is one of our sponsors but is not here. Um, so yeah, this has been pretty interesting. All right. Give me a second to put my eyeballs. Okay. So welcome to Block Meet May 2018. Uh, the, tonight we are going to be doing um, ICO pitch events. Um, we have whopping two companies that are going to be doing pitches. Uh, originally, I had the intention of spending a bunch of time talking about Reg A plus and Reg D and, and all these other various types of things. Um, ironically, we have an attorney here that could have possibly helped us with that. Um, but uh, for next time, you know, we'll uh, we'll uh, cover some of the legal aspects of. Uh, different types of regulated ICOs and, and the other types of offerings that we can do. Um, a lot of that landscape is changing. Um, so even for those of us that are involved on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, it's always a learning experience. So, All right, so if you need Wi-Fi, this is the Wi-Fi for the place. Most of you are often here, so you probably already know this, but for the new ones. I'm sorry? Wi-Fi is, oh, 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 okay. I've had a long day. <laughs> All right, so um, most of you know who I am. That ugly mug is me, um, in case you didn't figure that out. Um, I've been working in IT and software for 30 years, actually, this year. Um, I play chief technology officer to a half dozen companies. Uh, my company does a lot of technology. We've been doing a lot of stuff with AI, a lot of blockchain projects, mostly because it's been popular and a lot of people have been seeking us out to do that type of work. Uh, we do regular software development, but we're ex more exclusively on the IT side of things. Uh, these are our sponsors. Bunker Capital, who was one of the pitching companies and also the sponsor of the event. Um, they're not here, so I can't tell you much about them. Um, they were supposed to talk about themselves. Um, Sendine Spaces and Orion, which is my company. Again, Bunker Capital. Look them up, bunkercapital.com. I'm not 100% certain what they do, um, but I know they were a pitching company. All right, so we're on Facebook and Twitter at BlockMeet. Uh, we have a Telegram group. Uh, we're trying to get people to start using it, but I'll be honest, I don't use it myself. So, um, you know, I, I try to get more and more. My uh, co-organizer um, beats me up about it. Uh, Roxy, she's going to help me with these types of things. Um, we will be using social media more and in these telegram groups and be more engaging. Uh, we're we're going to start making more of that effort. All right, so this is going to be a quick one, but then we, as a group, we have a tendency of doing a lot of networking and breaking out into sessions afterwards, so we'll get through these ICO pitches, do a little bit of judging, and then after that, uh, we do what we do best, which is a lot of networking and, and, uh, and people talking about their projects. So um, the format that we're going to do, we've got 10 minutes per pitch, five minutes of Q&A after each individual pitch, and uh, judging by ETH Mint, and then we will have a winner selection. Unfortunately, we do not have large, monstrous prizes of cash that are going to fall from the sky or any kind of thing like that. Yeah, I know, right? Um, as I get you know, these events happening more and get some sponsorship and have a little bit more time to organize them, um, we will make these events much larger, uh, more companies uh, in terms of pitching and, and doing other types of things. So. Incidentally, I did ask and poll the group through Meetup um, looking for volunteer companies. Uh, I got a couple that had the interest in doing it, but for whatever reason didn't follow through. 
if we have an interest in doing more of the ICO pitch events because we think they're fun and engaging and interesting, reach out to me through Meetup or I've got some cards here up in the front. Um, reach out to me and we can organize a whole lot bigger event. This room will hold 250 people is what I'm told. So I would love to see this, this room filled up with that, um, doing a kick-ass, really big pitch event. So. All right, so minus Bunker Capital, we've got two companies. I'm sorry, Vince. <laughs> do, do you want me to switch the order or are you okay? Yes. Switch it, you want, you want, you're cool? Okay, all right. So we have two companies that will be pitching today. One company uh, called Pitch, ironically, and the other is MMA Pro. Um, both companies' CEOs are personal friends of mine, so I am decidedly not part of the judging process. Um, so we will have, as I'd mentioned before, um, no, well, Ethmint is the judging organization. This is Robert Parks and Kyle Forky, wherever he is back there. Um, do you want to take two seconds to talk about Ethmint? I have you guys further down in the slide deck, but it would be an opportune time to talk about it now. Sure. Um, we offer a turnkey solution to ICOs. We do everything um, from marketing to legal. Um, yeah, if you want to learn more, talk to us later. Uh, grab me. Thank you. Yeah, they do a great job, and they're great guys to work with. Um, they're very, uh, very well connected. A lot of the projects they work on are very good quality projects um, in the blockchain arena. So uh, I definitely encourage. Uh, connect, connecting with them. Okay, so with that, the very first presentation is MMA Pro. We have, give me a second here, I've got to switch to a different PowerPoint. What's that? Oh, I'm sorry, that's right. How quickly I forget. I'm old, man. That's, that's what happens. See how things happen? Okay, do you want me to drive the, uh, the presentations? Hello. Hey, guys. I'm Matt Lally. So I'm the, actual, I'm the founder of Pitch Investors Live. Um, my co-founder, Jonathan's not here today. Okay, so um, look, I've been the founder of many, many companies in the past. Some have done well, some have not done well. And um, common to all of them, uh, I think, has been um, difficulty in finding funding and I think that's common to a lot of companies which are based outside the main hubs, New York City, San Francisco, and so on. And uh, I think it holds back uh, tech and all other kinds of companies. So um, recently, of course, we've had this innovation called token sales, and everybody here knows what that is. Um, and they seem to be uh, a great way of raising funds from anywhere in the world. Um, and so that's a good thing. But there are some bad aspects to that, such as the fact that there are a lot of scam coins out there and so on. And it's very difficult to determine what's a good project and what's a bad project. And that's really because there's a lot of information to understand. There's a steep learning curve. And um, there's just a lot of confusion in the tech space, in the crypto space. Further, there are a few elements that we think are missing from the cryptocurrency space in general today. And one is entertainment. So we all saw the success of CryptoKitties, and we think that our team, we think that um, CryptoKitties was successful because traditionally the crypto space is fairly uh, boring, I would say. And there's not a lot of entertaining things to do if you are you know, wishing to engage in, uh, wishing to participate in blockchain type stuff. So that's one element. Also, there's a lot of information out there, but it's very difficult to determine what's worth listening to and um, really understand the space, especially if you're new. So there's a real need for education in the space. 
But education is, you know, obviously something that can be tackled in a lot of different ways, but people like to enjoy learning, not just kind of, they don't want to come into the space and treat it like something they've got to study. They want to learn more easily than that. So we were here to, um, to solve some of those problems. And uh, we looked for, you know, a way to solve them. And to find a solution, we looked for inspiration to shows like Dragon's Den and Shark Tank. Great shows. And uh, on the basis of, um, you know, following what Dragon's Den and Shark Tank and so on uh, do, we came up with this platform called Pitch Investors Live that allows entrepreneurs to pitch investors just like on Shark Tank and um, do it in front of a live audience just like on Shark Tank. And there are some other features as well that are pretty interesting and you'll learn about them in a minute. Hey, what are you doing there? Stop. You've seen these ads before. We're not doing that. In a world of... Nope. We're not doing that either. How about this? Imagine a world where entrepreneurs and startups have the opportunity to pitch potential investors from absolutely anywhere in the world using the blockchain platform all within an app. Think Shark Tank meets Kickstarter. An all new show. Stop it. Okay. Think Shark Tank meets Kickstarter. Except it's very different. How different? How about this? Hundreds of thousands of engaged viewers watching live in real time. A new pathway to a new... All right, that's enough, Mr. Epic Voice Guy. This is Pitch, a groundbreaking blockchain-based application that is backed by Ethereum. And it's fully decentralized with smart contracts to provide a new way for prospective startups to gain the capital and exposure needed to achieve their greatest potential. A once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Okay, that one's true. Pitch gives innovative entrepreneurs a chance to quickly launch token sales by utilizing the platform's live pitch video technology to connect entrepreneurs with seasoned business experts and investors from around the world. This revolutionary new app will make you feel empowered, educated, informed, and even entertained. This is the only platform where anyone can watch in real time. Best of all, don't just watch. Be part of the action. An engaged and live audience will also have the ability to actively participate during the entrepreneur's live pitch by asking questions of their own and sharing relevant ideas and opinions. They'll also have the opportunity to instantly and easily purchase tokens from projects that catch their attention and resonate with them the most. Changing the way entrepreneurs bootstrap their business, get exposure, and help them get their own innovative ideas off the ground in ways that were never possible before. Pitch, the only place that startups pitch investors live. Okay, so basically our platform is, well, we think it's revolutionary. It allows entrepreneurs to quickly get in front of investors from their mobile device. Okay, so they can just pull out their phone, write a summary of what they're looking to pitch, and then any, entre any investor sorry, who, um, who's interested in speaking to them live can just invite them very quickly to go live and pitch whatever they're pitching. And then an audience can actually watch, and they can do other things too. Because... This is not just Shark Tank, where you watch entrepreneurs pitching investors. This is also, it has elements of Kickstarter in it as well. So the audience who's watching the pitch live can actually buy tokens from the startup that's presenting, if they want. So it's the entertainment and education style of Shark Tank mixed with the crowdfunding of Kickstarter. And look, there's going to be a lot of money raised through this platform. And we didn't want to be a just, just another central entity to control this or you know, to decide who gets funded or anything like that. So what we've done is we've made it so that the users, the people who essentially own the platform, can decide what happens on the platform, what gets funded and so on. And, um, and to enforce, you know, to make sure that they don't have to trust anyone, we're building a lot of it on Ethereum. We have three main users on the platform. There's the entrepreneur who you know, decides, hey, I want to pitch something. They write up a quick summary, and then that's it. They wait for an invitation. The reason that they use the platform is because they want to get exposure for their idea and hopefully get funded by somebody or somebodies. Then we have um, investors. Investors go on because they want early access to uh, interesting startups. They want exposure themselves, and also, I'll tell you in a moment about this, but they, they gain rewards for doing that. And then we have the users 
who go on to be entertained and also to have the opportunity to buy tokens in interesting startups. So we have this reward system, which we think is really cool. And uh, basically what it does is it rewards people who do due diligence on these startups. As I said, there's a big problem with just terrible coins, terrible projects out there, and it needs to be solved. So what we're doing is we're rewarding people who contribute to the understanding of this project on the platform. So that would be the investors who go live with the entrepreneurs. They actually spend their time trying to talk to the entrepreneur and figure out if this is a project that should be taken behind the back of the barn and shot. Right? So when they, when they give this information to the community, they actually earn tokens for doing that. Then again, you also have another class of users, which is basically just regular users. And they can do things like upvote projects, write comments about projects. And, um, and then there are other ways as well to contribute information to the platform. And all these things are new pitch tokens. So we've got this three-stage vetting process. Everybody always asks us, like, how do you surface the good projects and, and make sure that you know, bad ones don't get the limelight? <clears throat> well, we have these three stages. So first is the community upvotes, writes comments about things, and so on. And then the second stage is we also have third parties who can essentially um, certify projects in different ways. And then the third stage is that people go live with the entrepreneurs and ask them questions. And look, even if a bad project gets to this stage, it's okay, because it's entertaining to watch a good project, a bad project, sorry, be exposed on Shark Tank, right? It's actually entertaining. So we don't mind that. So our vision is to have 24-7 pitches, entrepreneurs pitching from anywhere around the world. So someone on one side of the world pitching someone on the other side of the world. It shouldn't matter where you are. It, sh it shouldn't matter who you are. It should matter whether you have a good project and whether you're going to actually succeed. So um, that's our vision, is to just have pitches going on all the time on this platform. So anytime someone tunes in, they can see a pitch going on. And we have a really good team. It's about 40 people from around the world. A lot of them are concentrated in Florida and you know, throughout the US as well and uh, some from outside the US. A lot of people in England. And uh, our token sells live. Thanks for the water, I needed it. <laughs> That's it, thanks guys. Hey, um, I saw that you have a uh, verification process for these projects. Yes. How does that work? So, it's verification is in basically three stages. How do they sort? Because you said they certify it, right? Or they vet the projects that people are working on. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah. Well, first of all, the community of users can actually do things like upvote projects, write about them, and so on. So that's one stage. And then, obviously, there's going live with them. So there's you know the, this video, essentially, that's created. You can watch it live, or you can watch a recording. So there's going to be all these interviews that sort of expose what the project's about. And then, probably the one you're thinking about is the third parties. So we basically just give, you know, they're kind of like oracles. So oracles can sort of you know, uh, essentially say that, let's say a, a project has a good legal team or, or has, um, has some sort of letter saying that they're a utility token or something like that. Yeah, so it's oracles. Yeah. You want to take this question? Yeah. Um, are you, in, how, are you how are you incorporating uh, KYC and AML? Well, we have, um, for our token cell, we have a, uh, a KYC AML process, which uh, our attorney over there, Adam, helped contribute to. Uh, so we're, we're going through that process ourselves. We know what that's all about. And we're building it into the platform in a kind of optional way. 
so that projects can, uh, sorry, so users can decide that they want to go through that or not, but projects can decide whether they want to sell to people who have not gone through that process. Would that be optional because uh, uh, your users may want to have their own providers for KYC and ML and, or, um, or, 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 or foreign company that may not need it because they're not right, raising Right, so, so not everybody has to go through KYC and ML to buy tokens. It's only, you know, say, US people who are buying security tokens. So, um, you know, we just don't want to enforce it on every user when it's not necessary, that's all. Hi, so uh, where's your company? Here. In the US? Uh, yeah. Uh, so, so are you going through the same legal process that a company like Kickstarter would go through? Are you following the same? Do Reg D and stuff? No, uh, you know, Kickstart is required um, as a crowdfunding, instrument of crowdfunding, to file certain exemptions and uh, adhere to certain regulations. Do you, are you, are you yeah. Um, so there are different stages. So, so for our own token sale, we have not done that. We're selling a utility token. And we have um, a former regional director of the SEC has written us a letter indicating that you know, what we're selling is not a security. So we think that's pretty good. Uh, for on the platform itself, we will not be filing in any, uh, any of that stuff, basically. We're building a software product. The existing product that we have is fairly centralized, to be honest, and um, we're not doing any kind of token sales on that platform. The platform time frame is we're, we're going to be releasing a first version of the decentralized version, uh, maybe like two months from now. It's going to be just a very simple version. It's going to expand from there. Though. The cr we haven't been doing crowdfunding yet. Uh, us? Yeah, we, we had a successful uh, private pre-sale, and we're now in the public pre-sale stage. About a million. Yeah. Uh, it's 31,000 ETH is the cap, the hard cap. To, to do some marketing and so on, you mean? Yeah, we've, we've spent some on marketing and some on development. Yeah. Are you guys currently in beta? Sorry, who's asking? Ah, hi. Are you guys currently in beta mode? We have a version of the app that works now. It's, uh, it's live and it's kind of, it's been somewhat tested. I'd say, I, I don't know if I'd quite call it beta, but it's, it's pretty good, it, it works. Um, we're about to have Kevin Harrington, formerly of Shark Tank, on every week taking pictures on the platform. So it's actually a usable platform right now. But it's not like a, uh, it's not a beta version of the decentralized platform. That's coming later. Okay. That's not here yet. And what exchanges will you guys be registered with? We'll, the, the pitch token will be available on uh, HitBTC sometime in July. Yeah. I'm sorry? Because I've been speaking with HitBTC. And what what things are going to drive the the price of the token? As like as a token holder, what is what is going to make the price rise? And what do I what am I gaining by owning the token? We try to avoid making claims about whether the price will go up or down because we're a utility yeah, no, token. No, no. But um, as far so as like what, what, what can we'll I use? What can I use the token for? Yeah, well, well, so you can use the token for a few different things. So say you're an entrepreneur and you want to create a pitch on the platform. To do so costs you pitch tokens. So that's the first thing. And then as a user of the platform, you can spend those pitch tokens uh, to basically buy tokens from other projects on the platform. Are you it's kind of like a fee, a bit like uh, maybe like Binance or something like that. And all of the like projects that are collecting money by doing the pitch, that all happens outside of that happens outside of the platform, you're just kind of the, the connectivity facilitator? Yeah, between. sort of. Yeah, it's loosely connected, yeah. Do you have a vehicle, after, after the American investors, 
um, you know, go through their Reg D or Reg S or whatever they're going to do. Um, do you have a vehicle after liquidity lots to put on a on a on a certified uh, ATS like a T0 or something like that, like a like a like an on ramp or, or affiliation with um, potentially moving them to a to a certified ATS you, token launch like a start Are you kind of asking whether once they've pitched on the platform, we have a way to take them to the next step? Yeah, as far yeah. as uh, um, uh, like some some in, in, you know an American company that's re going through a compliant route uh, may also want to be on an exchange that's like a compliant ATS, yeah. uh, which you know a lot of my clients are like they want to be, for example, hosted on a start engine or T zero, uh, you know, with using an SD twenty token that has uh, KYC AML built into it, but then. You know, after liquidity launch, they also want to stay and remain on a certified ATS because they want to make sure that everything they're compliant, even the exchange that they're on, is compliant in, in that terms. We don't deal with any of that stuff. Okay. We're just we're just kind of creating a platform for people to get in front of an audience, sell some tokens at the beginning, yeah. and that sort of thing. Yeah. I wouldn't think it was required. It was just. <laughs> Thanks. Um, how much are you trying to raise? Thirty-one thousand ETH. And how are you structuring your raise? Are you doing like a private, like a, a private sale, and then like a pre-ICO, then an ICO, or how are you structuring? Your we're, we're currently in um, in like public pre-sale. Public pre-sale. Yeah. Okay. Did you already do your your private pre-sale? Yes. Got yes. It. Do uh, users need to own any crypto or know anything about the blockchain to to use your your app? Not really. Not not now. No. And. Um, to some extent, well, let's put it this way, there are some features that are sort of dependent on you having crypto, but we're trying to make it very easy to use. Um, and But you still need to own some crypto, mainly our token and some ETH, to use the platform, to use all the features of the platform. But, um, you know, if you're just a casual person who just wants to come check things out, no, you don't have to use it. So you said the company's registered in the U.S. So you're going by yep. SEC guidelines. Yeah. Well, because we're not a security, we're offering a utility token. Mm -hmm. How does that work when it comes to taxes? When the money's coming in and you're raising the either. It's revenue. So, the reason I ask is because a lot of companies they register outside of the U.S. and then funnel the money back in. So. <laughs> <laughs> My lawyer's telling me to answer that question. <laughs> Good question, though. Hey. Where, what are, where's the bulk of the money going that uh, that you were trying to raise? Where's the, like, what are the biggest challenges that lie ahead that uh, require raising X amount of dollars? Well, look, we're um, we're building out a really innovative tech product. And um, there are a lot of challenges in that, so you know you need money to do that. And then there's the uh, the marketing component as well, because obviously we want a lot of viewers on these shows. They're kind of like shows, right? Um, and we also have, um, you know, we've got to bring on some interesting partners. For example, I mentioned we got uh, Kevin Harrington from Shark Tank. Um, you know, so we've got to go out and build relationships like that as well. So that's a big component too. Thanks for the question. What's your soft cap and your hard cap, and where are you at currently? So we have a hard cap, and the hard cap is 31,000 ETH. What's your yeah. soft cap? We don't have a soft cap. Oh, okay. So are you just... Well, we, are, we already have a platform that works. Yeah. So we're basically building out... We're, we're moving in stages to decentralize aspects of that platform. And so, you know... We're just going to build as far as we can and keep building over time, but it doesn't all have to come through this uh, this funding okay, round. Okay, so really trying to like raise like twenty three million, and if you don't reach it, then you give it all back. You're just raising nope. however much you can and then using. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Um, 
How do the uh, unaccredited investors fit into uh, using this platform? Well, they can, that's a good question actually. They can, they can view the, uh, the pitches, for example. I mean, just like a TV viewer at home, right? So they can, they can do that, that's one thing. And then the other thing is, you know, if something is not a security or if they're outside of the US, for example, I mean, there shouldn't be any restrictions there either. So there's plenty of ways that they can fit in, but certainly uh, the startups that pitch may want to choose who can buy their tokens on the platform. is kind of the closest thing to what you're doing now maybe like, like a Facebook live maybe something like close but is there any other blockchain startups doing something similar to this this combines a lot of different elements right like um, like the live video element which you know there are there are blockchain startups that are working with live video and so on um, but I guess like kick ICO or something like that might be a close competitor I mean, it's similar in some ways to AngelList and things like that, although AngelList obviously isn't a crypto startup. So it sort of crosses a few different concepts into one. Do you have a plan going live date? Well, the platform's already live. That there is a live platform right now. Are there uh, users uh, getting funding through it right now? Yeah, I mean, we haven't. So we haven't been doing the token sales through the platform right now. So what the way it works is we connect an entrepreneur with an investor. They talk live, and then if they want to continue discussing, they can take it offline. And then it's kind of like an introductory service at the moment, in a way. Okay, but they're getting private capital. Right yes, now. exactly. Yes. So, but, but the plan obviously is to have the funding as uh, occur kind of not through the platform, but be more directly linked to the platform, and then it will be trackable. At the moment, it's not really trackable. I'll take my money anyway. I don't care if it's from a token or straight <laughs> cash. I'll take it either way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back, sorry. Um, so it's somewhere around five cents. It's kind of it's pegged to Ethereum, so it's up and down. But if you just go to the website, there's a calculator you can find out. What's the, what's the max supply of tokens? One point six one eight billion. And. Um, some just about the uh, how that's apportioned so a big chunk of that is kind of like on the side in a pool that will be used for the rewards right so like a, a whole bunch of it's for rewards and stuff um, and then you know there's obviously a portion for the the sale and there's a portion for the team and portion for some other stuff uh, just curious um Assume you're the founder. And yep. Gentleman here, maybe. Uh, what's your guys' background, and also uh, from the technology side, who's kind of heading that for you guys, or what? What are their qualifications to kind of uh, introduce something at this yeah. scale? You know. Yeah. Well, look, we're a, we're a mix of people from different backgrounds. My co-founder Jonathan's a marketing, really like a genius in my opinion. Um, myself, I founded a lot of tech startups. I've been a programmer. I've, um, yeah, I've. I've done a lot of d software engineering. I've done um, a lot of other stuff in startups as well. Uh, this guy, Rich Kavanagh, is our, our dev lead. He's been um, like CTO, VP of engineering at very, very large companies, and he's got some blockchain background as well. Um, we have a, a, lot of market, a lot of marketing people on our team, to be fair. And that's because this is partly a marketing game, right? So. Video is a big part of what we do, and we have to look impressive on video. Um, I don't mind tooting. It's not me that did the video, so I can say I think our video is pretty good. And uh, we're planning a lot of um, other videos like that to promote not only the tokens, but also to promote the platform, including, you know, after someone goes live with, say, Kevin Harrington to pitch their startup, we're going to package those videos up and create kind of like a show. So, you know, there's a need for some of the marketing people. There's a lot of good development people on the team as well, and of course legal, 
and um, yeah, so it's a good mix. One more question. Thank you. Awesome. So that is Pitch. Their website is at pitch.ventures, yeah, correct? Pitchinvestorslive.com. Pitch Let me switch over really quick. Okay. I'm going to give this to you. You want to run it from here? John. Okay. Over the mouse, so you can do just click in there. I'll do the same. All you're really doing is just right here. Click, click, click. Hello, everybody. Um, my pitch is definitely going to be different from Mark's. Mark, let me know how I do so maybe I can get on your platform. <laughs> and my attorney is definitely not here. Matt, sorry. Okay, so the ISO that I am representing is MMA Pro. What it is is a uh, platform. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Vincent from MMA Pro. Like this? Yeah. <laughs> okay. As you know, I never did this before. I pitched in front of anybody, so I'm sorry if I am uh, a little out of my ordinary here. I'll try to do my best. So, what the whole concept is here is that fighters, mixed martial arts fighters, which means all types of fighters, they train hard and they don't get paid uh, until they get to a certain level and then they get paid. Once they become a, you know, a pro, which takes a certain amount of criteria, then they start getting paid. So a lot of the fighters that you know that are really high up there that you know and you recognize, they get paid a lot of money because of what they've done and, and all the hard training. It's not, they're not like football players where they get... Uh, you know, if they get hurt, they get fixed, you know, and from a doctor and so on and so forth. They really got to, you know, do it hardcore. So. Basically, um, what happens is the, um, the whole concept of uh, the whole fight industry is the, the money is made from like UFC uh, Bellator, all these big fight organizations, and the f fighter doesn't get paid. For instance, um, UFC just sold for four billion, over four billion dollars, and they paid four million for it in 2002. Therefore, give, therefore giving them a big profit, and the fighters again, they get small amounts of money for their hard work, right? And they need to, uh, you know, like I said, get a contract. They need to uh, meet certain criteria before they could even get to become uh, an MMA, you know, a, a pro MMA fighter, you know, and get a decent salary. So, we intend to disrupt that whole industry and allow the fighter 
to gain access to some sort of compensation or some way that they can you know, uh, move forward in their career and in their um, ability of becoming possibly a pro by using the token. So um, monetize the fighter. We can, uh, there is going to be different ways um, that they're going to be able to, um, that we're going to do this. <laughs> um, we, this token is going to be different from what uh, Matt was just saying. This token is going to be linked to some brick and mortar type business. Um, for one, it's going, there's going to be a restaurant tied into it, a sports bar, with an actual cage in the center of the sports bar, like an arena. Um, so what we intend to do is give back revenue to the fighter in proportion based upon their um, fight record and so on and so forth and what they do. So they will actually receive revenue back from the restaurant sales, from advertising sales, and whatever else, apparel, gear, gear and so on and so forth, going back to the token. And a token the stakeholder will receive revenue from that. So there's a few different ways, right? If we're talking about the sports bar and the grill, we're talking about you know franchising across you know American and hopefully um, you know domestic and abroad. So regular restaurants today earn revenue in basically two ways, right? Be beverages and food. And if they do an event, you know then that's some additional. This restaurant, a theme restaurant, will have apparel gear advertising in the ring when you look at an MMA fight or you look at the fights what do you see there's advertising everywhere so this is a big advertising you know revenue stream um, for the restaurant uh, tournaments and so on and so forth reality TV um, we have started to lay out a, a reality show that will go inclu you know, inclusive with this and it will all go hand in hand so the revenue streams are um, the same advertising, um, the intellectual property, and that'll be basically you know fiat money, not cryptocurrency, but it'll be tied to the actual MMA Pro token. And then you know tournament waging, wagering, which you know you're gonna, it's a sort of a gambling, you know, but it's it's a, a gambling of skill, not chance. It's not just roll a dice, and it's you know, it's over. So, like uh, FanDuel and uh, the other one, DraftKings. So, that's another way that the whole system, the whole ecosystem, will earn revenue back to support the token. So, we built up a little bit of uh, what's going on in the world with restaurants. Um, so, we're looking at uh, you know the whole global food industry uh, restaurant is generates about 2.7 trillion dollars annually. Um, the U.S. alone, with 620,000 restaurants, which combines an annual revenue of about seven, almost 800 you know billion dollars. I know we're not talking about that whole industry because we're more niched into the sports uh, bar industry, but it's still it's within there. And uh, the numbers and the look like they're going to be growing at anywhere from uh, 8 to 10% from what I'm understanding. So this is a survey of over 500 independent um, restaurant owners. 56% uh, of them are optimistic about the future of different uh, portions of uh, economics and um, sales and so on and so on, and 17% were, um, you know, not as optimistic. So that's good. And good. Next. So another good thing about restaurant, the restaurant industry is, in the public arena, you had Bob Evans, you had Buffalo Wild Wings, Panera, Ruby Tuesday, and Cordoba. And um, last year, 
there were about 141 deals that were in merger and acquisitions, and about four of them, four of these deals, they're starting to fall off. They're going private. So that's a good thing. If they're going pi private, that means that the industry is strong, solid, and they're coming out of the public arena and going private, and they're keeping their money private. And they're looking at a, uh, almost uh, 11 times uh, EBITDA multiples, and uh, the values are high, 13% higher than last year. So that's good. Play a little video for you. was watched by more young men than the NBA playoff broadcast at the same time. There's now a time for the ultimate theme restaurant. We've been working on this for well over a year. It's called the MMA Sports Bar and Grill. Uh, I'm Michael Amenis Johnson. I'm representing the Black Zillions over at uh, Jocko Hybrid Training Center in Delray Beach, Florida. But to be able to come into a bar and actually watch the fights uh, live and to be able to, you know, enjoy a meal and uh, be comfortable at the same time and uh, just have a great time. You know, I definitely um, think it's a great idea and I think it's going to uh, take off. I'm Abel Trujillo. Uh, I train with the Black Zillions at the Jacko Hybrid Training Center. And I'm a UFC lightweight fighter. The idea of an MMA sports bar and grill is a great idea. I would go bring my friends. Uh, this is what the sport needs right now. It's the fastest growing sport, and this will help it grow even more to a different crowd. Since the sport is growing so fast, a lot of people want to catch a fight, and this is a great way for fans and people that are not fans to become fans to come to the bar and catch a live fight rather than go to the sports bar to watch it on TV. My name is Kamaru Usman, and I stay with the Black Zillions at the Jocko Hybrid Training Hello. Center. I thought it'd be a phenomenal idea. I can't wait for the dream to become a reality so I can go in, sit with my friends and family, and watch a great fight while enjoying a great meal. Guys, on my night off, I'm going to be there sitting out eating, enjoying great fights, signing autographs, and just having a great time. In these last few years, I've seen something happening. In South Florida, what happens is they take a movable cage and they move it from one venue to another one restaurant, one club. I thought of, let's put this ring inside of the restaurant and let's build a national franchise. In the uh, whole MMA world as a fighter, there's so many different ways that they have or can obtain access to money, funds, to help their career grow. Uh, one of the big ways that we anticipate putting into the platform, into our ecosystem, is uh, through gaming and live online gaming, which I mentioned before, A, wagering, B, through uh, virtual reality. Think about this. If you're a fighter in Ireland and you're not making much money, but you can fight and you have access to a computer and you're in the uh, ecosystem here, and then you have little Joey or Johnny who's on the computer a lot and he doesn't really want to go out into the real world and go find a, because uh, he's a little timid, maybe like me, <laughs> uh, he doesn't want to go out into the real world and uh, go find a uh, gym to go to. So he goes and to this reality world and all of a sudden he finds a fighter and now all of a sudden they could do virtual reality back and forth in this virtual world and he could be trained by somebody in Ireland. So that's one of the ways we're looking at, you know, adding value to this whole ecosystem. So there's, you know, some of the uh, numbers that are just astronomical worldwide, 137 billion 
uh, in 2018, and they're talking about the whole gaming industry being uh, by 2021 uh, upwards of 180 billion. So, in this whole ecosystem, remember we have two two ways of doing this. We actually have a token that we're actually going to be hopefully having a value for and a good value because of all of all the ways that we're kicking back into the ecosystem so if you look here you have fighter games alone it just takes up maybe a little bit less than six percent of the whole um e uh, the whole gaming industry and that's still eight billion dollars and it's you know f 40 million if that's only a quarter a half of a point if we could obtain that and manage to tap into that on a real basis, plus advertising and so on and so forth, to go back into the ecosystem. Uh, we talked about a little bit about the reality show. Um, I don't know if anybody watches TV or what you guys watch. Or, uh, I think I don't. So I think the only thing that's on TV these days is reality shows. And doing some research on reality shows, it's just mind-boggling. Everything is reality shows from oh, make, making a garage to making a building to uh, you know, what the Kardashians did last night when they were eating dinner, you know, to put it nicely. So I think the reality show ties into everything that this whole ecosystem will be doing, from restaurant reality back into the ecosystem. And here's just a real, I don't have 40 people in the team, but we have a, a few people here. Um, uh, Barry Stevens, he's a um, mixed martial artist, a uh, very smart man. He's in business, also entrepreneur, and he, um, he's in the uh, Mixed Martial Arts Hall of Fame. He's on the board. We have uh, Dr. James Maranakis, uh, you know, businessman, inventor, international speaker, um, many, many intellectual properties, uh, very, very good for the team. And then we have uh, Mr. Martin O'Dowd. Um, if you guys ever heard of Rainforest Cafe uh, in Sawgrass, Rainforest Cafe, well, that's the founder. He's the founder, uh, took it public, raised all the money, and uh, sold it off to Laundry for a few hundred million dollars. So he's on board also. He's, he's our advisor for the restaurant portion of this. As, yeah, okay. Go easy on me. My attorney's not here. And you can see I'm nervous. <laughs> not that easy. How did you establish your advisory board? Uh, Martin, I know, for I know for a few years, uh, this idea has been thought of, the restaurant um, has been, the sports bar has been thought of for I'd say about eight years, and um, nothing was done with it, unfortunately. But it's funny, before blockchain came along, it was the same system. The, the fighters were going to come into the restaurant, they were going to support the restaurant because it, based upon their criteria, their level, their ranking, they'd come in and they'd get a revenue share back from the restaurant. So now that blockchain came into the picture, it's really a no-brainer because now it could be more than just a restaurant and growing just a restaurant concept. Now we could, you know, do this. The whole world can be on a database and earn, you know, tokens and have somewhat of a brick and mortar business to it. So it's been a long time. It's not just a, a thought of idea yesterday. But it's not. It's there's no restaurant at present, by the way. So is the uh, token going to be uh, direct equity to the, to the restaurant? Um, okay, I don't want to get too far into that. I do not have an attorney here at present. And I got to be real careful what we say and how we say it. So I can... Uh, how do you plan on uh, extracting value into the token? Like, what is, 
Why would an investor buy your token? What, uh, what perceived value is there? Well, un unlike other tokens that are utility, uh, utility tokens, there's their ecosystem and it's all within their ecosystem, right? Their whole token, everything that they do is within their ecosystem. This, we're actually bringing brick and mortar revenue from something that you're going to do every day. You're going to eat. People are going to eat. So we're bringing two industries together that are huge, you know, multi-billion dollar industries from eating and fighting entertainment. Like Martin calls it, it's the first day I told him about it, it's, this is entertainment. You know, it's pure entertainment. You know, nothing's out there like that. So the value will ultimately come from obviously the revenue stream, the brick and mortar revenue stream, the reality revenue stream from the advertisers and sponsors and so on and so forth from within and it'll be given back a portion, which I'm not at liberty to say yet because we're working on that, um, back to the ecosystem. So there will be a dividend paid to the ecosystem or a revenue share. Okay, yeah, so it's some kind of revenue sharing model. Um, do you know whether or not you intend to uh, uh, launch this offering as a security versus uh, a utility token? No, it's going to have to be a security because it's paying, it's paying a dividend. So it will definitely be a security. So. So first of all, I just, I know that it's very, very nerve wracking to be standing up there and I think you did a very good job. So you deserve it. Thank you. Um, I had to do this earlier this year here, so I totally get it. So I just want to understand how this works. So you're going to go easy on me though, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I just want to have a conversation. I just want to understand how it works. So is part of this, if I buy tokens, and I go to your restaurant or I want to gamify it or I want to watch it on my phone mm -hmm. or whatever, my device. Um, can I bet on a fighter? Can I maybe not bet on the fighter? I don't want to put, your, put you in a go easy situation. <laughs> but can I kind of try to guess who's going to win? If your girlfriend or your other friends. Right, like between my long. friends. Yeah, it's it's not going to go through the system that way. Okay. It's going to be more of a, you're familiar with FanDuel? No. Um, fantasy football? No. It's, um, it's, le it's, legal. it's legal in the U.S. The companies are based out of the U.S. Okay. It's a, um, it, it, it's like, uh, it's a roll of the dice. It's a game of, it's not a game of chance. It's, mm -hmm. it's going to be skill. So you won't bet on him to beat her or her to beat him, you're going to bet on her and her, you know, her, the two girls are going to beat the guy, but it's going to be a, you know, somewhat of a uh, championship and it could all happen in one night. It could all happen in one session of fights or it could happen, you know, uh, in two days, three days. It all depends upon how we make the tournaments. Okay. I want to talk to you more about how, how it works. Cause I, no, I think I, it's interesting and I, I want to understand like, way, what happens me. with my tokens <laughs> when I buy them and what I can, what can I do with them in your application and all Well, that. there's no, okay. So if you're providing a service and you're one of the ecosystems, you're, you're a service, maybe you're a doctor and you have a, a you know, an office and you participate and maybe you'll take tokens from, you know, the fighters, right? Um, the fighters will be able to uh, give back to the community. They'll be able to, you know, besides the, um, virtual reality, um, stream video for their fans. You know, it, it's, it's not really much more out of the ordinary. We're, we're going to make it more than what's out there, but it's the same concept that everybody else is doing. It's basically attention. Mm -hmm. If you're giving attention, you should be paid. If, you know, if you're doing something like Facebook or something or, or promoting somebody, you should be paid, you know, um, not you know, not the opposite. So that's what we're doing with the whole ecosystem, right? Okay. So we're, we're trying to give the fighters a way to earn money. And we have a list of them. Um, and, you know, 
You have a list of them? Do they know? Yeah. I mean, are they open? And I just actually, I just I don't have everything out today yet because okay. I mean, there's nothing out there like this. This is the first of its kind. I mean, if somebody knows anything about it, I'd like to know. I have but. a friend. I know someone who's a cage fighter. So mm. I was. I just texted her. I'm like, hey, would you? Would this, is this something you would do? So I'm waiting for her to let me know. But um, <laughs> yeah, do you have a list of these guys or potential participants? Already? Oh, on here? Yeah. yeah. I have. We have some pro fighters. Absolutely. That back. Those those three kids are pro fighters today. Okay. One of them was pro when we did that. The other two are pro now. They're okay. in the UFC. Awesome. Um, I, I have numerous amounts. I, I like the concept. I want to talk yeah. to you more about yeah. it. Yeah. It's. Uh, it, 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 Thank you. Did you say in the beginning you were a part of MMA? Like, how does the whole licensing work with using that? Um, show you a couple, a few links there. Um, you have to, you have to prove that you are, you have three fights, you have three successful fights to go on the UFC, even to get into UFC to apply. You have a fight card. You have, you have three successful fights with a record to apply, and that's not even saying that they'll take you or not, but. That's what you have to do. So you have to get vetted to get into the UFC. No, I mean, as far as your the name and the concept, as far as the token, are you using the MMA name? Like oh, MMA is just a generic name, mixed martial arts. It's not oh, a. It's, it's not trademarked. It, no. Oh, okay. MMA Pro. It's now it's trademarked now. It's been out, so it's now trademarked MMA Pro. Okay. And uh, I was going to say before. The, so let's think about this. Years ago, I was offered a, uh, to get involved with the cell phone business. And I lived in Long Island, New York. And there was, and I was young and cocky and whatever. And one of my friends now used to uh, say, come on, let's open up another place, another cell phone store. I said, what are you, crazy? This is Suffolk County, nine and a half miles down the road. There's another cell phone place. I said, you're nuts. I'm not doing this. Where, there's two cell phone in shopping centers. There's two and three of them. Well, same thing happen with, is happening with mixed martial arts. Everybody wants to fight. Everybody's a fighter. And if you don't fight and you can't fight, you know a fighter. Your son's a fighter. This one's a fighter. Everybody's into it. So it's been going on for years, the Colosseum, you know, 80 uh, BC and so on and so forth. So this, just think about this. So if you got this email and you were invited to the token sale and it said that you, whatever you put in, invite your fighter friend and he's going to get... 65% of whatever you put in into the token sale for free because that's what the, this whole thing's about getting the fighter to earn and have the ability to you know grow in his passion so hi Vince oh boy <laughs> it wasn't me <laughs> no, <I'm just> kidding. <laughs> it, I have to joke around I have to I can no sorry problem. <laughs> it's well known that MMA is a big entertainment venue. Can you comment on some of the sizes of crowds that they draw and how many people, numbers wise, there are actually involved in MMA all the way down to the average person that's just getting started? If you know, if you have an it, idea. The age group of fighters? The numbers, numbers of fighters and the numbers of spectators. Well, back in uh, the Coliseum days, there were 65,000 on average. <laughs> Nowadays. <laughs> I would think they're quite a bit more. Um, I can't give you that exact number because I've done so much research, and I, I can't. I, we have to look worldwide because this is really worldwide, even though we're in the U.S. The um, the the, col the coliseums these days hold. Uh, Yeah, I don't. I don't have. I can't. I don't. You know, I don't want to make up a number. I, I don't want to put myself out there. <laughs> uh. Oh my God, the viewership is ridiculous. Oh no, no, not that's quite a low number. Yeah. And that's, that's just, uh, you know, viewership, you know, in an actual event. Then you have it televised and 
so on and so forth. It's mixed martial arts, different. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, absolutely, all day long. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's worldwide, yeah, absolutely. Where are you in the process of launching the ICO? Have you already launched or are you getting ready to? No, we're in the uh, pre well, family the and friends round. You're we'll, in the planning we'll phase, you said? In the what? Planning? You're yes. in the planning phase? Okay. Yeah. selling people credit and let's say with this I don't know two hundred dollar credit they can purchase all kinds of activities in that what you're offering let's say watch a couple of hours of your reality TV shows eat at the restaurant and consume there or um, game do some gaming and then they, they can only trade that token inside the services and products that you're that you're offering is that kind of a local currency almost for that for that Yes, group? within the ecosystem, yes, within, yeah. for the ecosystem, participants. I, I, I kind of think about green things when I hear ecosystem. But no, 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 well, it's, it's, it's <laughs> the whole, every, the economy, right, economy. So if, uh, again, she's the doctor and she'll take MMA pro tokens because she treats, uh, you know, a lot of fighters with a lot of injuries, head injury, whatever it may be. And then we have um, somebody who has a, you know, a, a gear apparel store and he'll take the tokens. So now he has tokens he sold product for, and now he's in, you know, within the world, right? And there's different items, different things that he can do with that, you know, or, and maybe he just wants to give it to fighters that are donating their time to children or something, you know, there's so many different ways. Right, the fan will be able to talk directly to you. I'm, excuse me, I'm sorry, the fighter will be able to talk directly to you as a fan, uh, and they can promote themselves within you know so they could really come up the ranks a lot faster there's a lot of fights that go on that nobody knows about when I was on there talking about we move cages we move literally physical cages and inside a place like this with two floors and pro fight goes well not pro amateur fights but they're awesome fights totally totally awesome fights and it's done all professionally and legally you know you have the whole the um, 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 tongue tied the um, wow, <laughs> thanks, you, bye. Thank you. <laughs> I just got totally tongue tied. So they come and they, you know they bring the ambulance, they bring the doctor, they pay for the insurance, they bring you know, and they bring the referee. I have referee friends. I have UFC referee friends. I have I've been in every part of this, except for on television, get my head broken. But I <laughs> just didn't make the television part. But um. You're gonna roast me again? <laughs> Thanks. Boxing has a venue for amateurs. It's called Golden Gloves Boxing. And there's no compensation, but people fight through the ranks of Golden Gloves Boxing, and they can progress into Olympic fighting if they want to, or they can then turn pro. It's well organized, and it's a way that people enter into the boxing game. The MMA fighters are not that well organized, and in order to organize themselves further so that they can take advantage of the structure that's there, they need venues. And this is a formal venue which is supported by a virtual currency that they can interact with the general public in any way that they want to to gain status and to find a way to compensate and support themselves while they're doing what they're doing. So it's a more sophisticated world, not much unlike Golden Gloves boxing. It's just they have a lot more perks because we've evolved. The UFC is an organization. They, they put it together back in 2002. I don't know if you, anybody remembers, but you had like Hoist Gracie, this J J Brazilian guy, you know, learning uh, to fought jiu-jitsu with this gi, get in a cage, you know, he's this big with a gorilla, you know, five times the size of him, and he would, 
you know, take them. And there was, it was chaotic. It was pretty crazy in the beginning. And um, Dana uh, White, he kept on fighting it, fighting it, fighting it because they wanted to stop it. But they ultimately uh, regulated it to a portion, you know, to a part. And, uh, you know, where they are now. So they matched up fighters so it was more even and so on and so on. So, but the, again, they just sold for four billion, over $4 billion, from what we know anyway. It's in the news, but it's pri it was a private sale, so we don't know what they could have sold for. If they're saying $4 billion, it was probably a lot more than that, but that's just one organization. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> so... We're going to do uh, a bit of judging um, by uh, the gentleman from Eastmint. Uh, am I pronouncing that right? Eastmint? Okay, perfect. Uh, and then we will deliberate, or I'll let, I'll let them deliberate rather, and then we will uh, come back with a, a decision on the winner in, in 10 minutes. Yep. <laughs> This is one of those things where, what's that? I'm sorry? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll hang on to it. Pardon me. I'll, I'll drink it Thank myself. You. Thank you. I thought there was two here. I, no, I had one. That's really, really I, uh, I can't speak. Sorry, I didn't want to take yours. No, 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 that's fine. I think I was, I had mine somewhere. I don't even know what I did with it. I know I drank one of them, so then I can have this one. <laughs> We'll talk a little bit. Hey guys, um, so pretty uh, reasonably short deliberation. Uh, 
like like you said earlier, we are we're Ethmint. We have a uh, special uh, focus on uh, integrating existing businesses with the blockchain and helping them raise capital via ICO. Uh, if that's something you're interested in, interested in or want to learn more about, feel free to talk to us. Um, we went over both of the pitches we just heard, and I think uh, you know there's a there's a stark difference, right? We have a ICO that's basically uh, completed, ready to, to launch, versus a uh, ICO that's still in the planning phase. The uh, pitch done by Pitch was obviously much more polished, uh, rehearsed, well thought out, cleaner. The video was actually one of the best I've ever seen from an ICO. Uh, uh, it, it really grabbed your attention and uh, made you think a little bit more than a, a generic uh, cartoon marker board video that you usually see. So Pitch uh, wins the pit, Pitch section hands down. The uh, token models. With your standard utility token, there's also there's always the the issue of uh, velocity, and uh, it's up to the people issuing the ICO to it, to address that to to drive real value for their token holders. I'm not convinced on the surface that Pitch has adequately addressed that. I, I think there might be a, a high velocity on that platform. Uh, meaning, uh, if someone wanted to, to go on to pitch to uh, to pitch a project, they would be prompted to buy pitch tokens, which they would then immediately need to sell. I don't know that people would be inclined to buy and hold these tokens, uh, though if the platform was massively successful, you may uh, drive a lot of value for investors. Uh, it's just a little more speculative. I mean, I don't know. Uh, a great deal about the project. Those are just my first thoughts. Uh, however, with the MMA Pro ICO, the fact that they are <clears throat> willing to label themselves as a security, and from my understanding, it seems like they're planning on doing a revenue sharing model. You are uh, essentially investing in an, an actual stock, so to speak, and there would be real value if that was the case. So I'm inclined to give the the edge to MMA Pro as far as the, the token model is concerned. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I think uh, Robert wanted to. So, so when it comes to regulatory concerns with the pitch, I feel like they're going to run into some major issues. Um, I've looked at crowdfunding uh, every way from Sunday. I've looked at it every way I possibly could. I would love to talk to your lawyer and see how you guys plan on navigating um, that here in the United States being US based. Um, I feel like when you start to raise money, you're going to run into some real concerns and uh, real legal costs. Um, if you were doing this outside of the United States, I feel like it might be a lot easier. Because um, when it comes to the way the SEC and regulators look at these platforms that host crowdfunding, they don't, they don't look at the individuals raising the money, they look at the platform itself. And that's who they go after. So as soon as you have a fraudulent uh, raise on your platform, I feel like they're really going to drop the hammer on you. Uh, so that's my main concern with your platform. I feel like it's a great idea. Um, I just don't know how you're going to execute it um, here in the United States and not run into any problems. So. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, the, the pitch idea is uh, extremely ambitious. Um, and with ambitious ideas comes large attack surface areas and, y you know, large things you have to plan for. But I mean that that uh, you know that goes with the territory. Um, uh, granted, there might be legal challenges I'm unaware of in the uh, MMA space, possibly uh, insurance nightmares, and in the you know if you actually have a brick and mortar building hosting fights with amateur fighters, you know maybe somebody dies. I mean that that could also be a very real problem, but it's not something I'm familiar with. Uh, overall, um, you know taking the two projects for what they were, one that's uh, polished and, and one that's still in its infancy, I would, uh, I would have to vote towards the, uh, the pitch ICO. Um, I think bro both projects have their merits, but um, based on what I've seen here today, the, uh, the pitch, pitch has my vote. Yeah, the pitch, the pitch idea, obviously being in ICO phase, raising money, your idea is thought out, uh, your presentation was wonderful. Um, other than the regulatory concerns, which 
I mean, maybe you have the answers for. Uh, I don't know about. Um, it was a great idea. The MMA Pro idea was great as well, but at this point, it's just an idea. It's not an actual ICO. So, yeah. Therefore, we're gonna go with the pitch. That's a guess. Yeah.